All right, so tonight we're chatting with Anna Davenport of Becoming Alive about how we can find fitness routines at home. And um, Anna has 18 years of fitness experience in many facets, including big box club, corporate wellness, and personal training. Um, she has a bachelor's in exercise and sports science um, and a lot of other certifications, NASM personal trainer, STOT reformer, Pilates trainer, TRX certified, yoga, mat Pilates, and bar certified, core certified, and prenatal and post um, postpartum qualified. Um, I, I'm sure that's just to name a few. I, Anna, Anna does a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, along with all her qualifications, Anna is an expert in figuring out how to sneak in workouts when you can't get to the gym, um, which is perfect for all of us right now since we can't go. Um, <laughs> Um, Anna is a mother of three young kids, seven, five, and 14 months, and her husband is a pilot who has gone for days at a time, so she's gotten very good at finding creative ways to squeeze in those workouts. So thanks for joining us, Anna. I'm yeah. excited what have to say today. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you for having me, and thanks for jo those of you that um, have joined at last minute. So Nicole just kind of threw this out to me this morning and um, I love a chance to talk about fitness. Um, and so I'm grateful to be here tonight. A lot of, I think um, the value from our time together will come through any questions that you may have. And I hope that you're joining because you're looking for ways to um, start adding in more fitness. Um, and maybe you're here just to support Nicole and I, and that's great too. So. We thank you for that. Um, a little bit about how I ended up in fitness. Nicole mentioned um, some of my um, experiences, but sort of that journey. Um, my parents were really good at doing active things with us as kids. And I joke around that um, I'm really thankful for the three top things they taught me. And that was um, a love for Jesus, a love for being outdoors, and a love for reading. And those have been things that have been a really beautiful part of my life. Um, family bike rides. I grew up in a big family. And so um, we really were finding affordable things to do. And so we did a lot of evening bike rides or walks or just um, playing outside. And that was a huge part of my childhood. And then sports became um, even more important. And so then looking at what kind of career could I do? I love being active. I love moving. Um, and my parents had competing wishes for me. They wanted me to either be a phi ed teacher or an art teacher. <laughs> um, my mom was a nurse. My dad was a, a health teacher. And so um, I started shadowing things and I fell in love with um, personal training. I love the proactive side of wellness and really helping people to um, have a, a lifelong um, active lifestyle because I just have seen now in the last 18 years um, what that does for people. And I had just a small idea um, when I was getting into this, what that would look like. And, um, and we're truly the healthiest people that I have worked with or um, have been those that it's just part of their life. So it's just ingrained in what they do. They do those silly things. They park their car really far away. Um, they're walking to as many places as they can. They ride their bike to work. They do those simple things and they're eating lots of fruits and vegetables and nothing drastic. Um, and I think that's one thing that um, can be hard in the fitness world, especially uh, with trainers. You never know what you're gonna get as far as nutrition plan. And there is no perfect plan. Um, it's, I've seen everything work for people, um, for their goals, but it's gonna be, the things that you do the most consistently for the life for your lifespan that you're going to have the best results from so active childhood looking for something that i could do as a career um and fitness has always been there for me in my life journey so um in college i turned to fitness to really manage a lot of um, back pain and just um, stress and anxiety um, i had a lot of test anxiety um, and just the college lifestyle is stressful, right? We all remember that, hopefully. It's been a while, but um, I found even more benefit through being active, and that's where I picked up the yoga and Pilates and um, kind of stepped away from those high-impact, high high-stress sports. Um, 
kind of fast forwarding years, um, I had quite a groove early in my career as far as um, sort of like the dream exercise routine, right? My husband and I talk about this. I'm like, on Saturdays, I'd go to the gym, I'd work out for a couple hours, I'd sit in the sauna or the hot tub. Um, and that doesn't really work in the adult lifestyle um, for most of us, um, as um, I've added a family. Um, it's been really interesting to see um, how my expectations have needed to change um, and how I can still enjoy it, even though it doesn't look like it looked um, 10 years ago. And so I think that was something coming into this that I really wanted to talk about is um, how we can just change our expectation right now. So I've had a lot of clients that are feeling really stressed, not being able to go to the gym. That is their comfort place. Um, and I'll be really honest, not being able to squeeze in a workout without the kids present. Um, the first couple of weeks of being home felt really stressful for, for me and for my husband and just being like, we just need this we need this refreshing time. Um, and now just adapting and um, continuing to um, work out and just making, um, changing. Changing our expectation is huge. So I'd love for you guys to get a pen and paper. I will have you towards the end of our time, ask yourself some questions just to reflect on. So if you can grab a pencil and pen so you have it for later on, that would be great. Um, before we get into, um, some of the specific challenges you're facing and my specific tips. I'm actually going to share my screen and I have a fun video that I want to share with you guys. You've hopefully already seen it, but it's just really inspiring for what 30 minutes a day of exercise can do for you. And every time I watch it, I like want to take notes too to remind myself. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Nicole, if there's an issue with it, let me know if you can't see it or something. This is again, our first time kind of doing this. So let me get this going for you guys. It's just a little hard to hear, Anna. Less, controlling your blood pressure, cholesterol, and so on and so forth. So all these things are incredibly important, and I wouldn't want you to uh, minimize your efforts in any one category. But I, I want to know what comes first. What 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 has the biggest impact? What has the biggest return on investment? What makes the biggest difference to your health? So I did my research, and I, I found an answer, at least for me. And it's tricky because you know all these things are sort of overlapping. Uh, but I picked out this intervention and because of its breadth, uh, it worked for so many different health problems. And that's what I found so cool about it. So just to kind of walk you through a quick list. So this intervention uh, in patients with knee arthritis who receive one hour of treatment three times a week reduced their rates of pain and disability by 47%. In older patients, it reduced progression to dementia and Alzheimer's by uh, around 50%. For patients at high risk of diabetes and coupled with other lifestyle interventions, it reduced progression to frank diabetes by 58%. Postmenopausal woman who had four hours a week of the treatment had a 41% reduction in the risk of hip fracture. It reduced anxiety by 48% in a big meta-analysis. Patients suffering from depression, 30% percent were relieved uh, with low dose and that bumped to 47 percent as we uh, increased the dose um, following over 10,000 Harvard alumni for over 12 years. Those that had the intervention had a 23 percent lower risk of death than those who didn't get the treatment. It's the number one treatment of fatigue and of course the kind of outcome of choice or my favorite outcome is quality of life which is really all of the above and, and really about making your life better and this treatment has been shown over and over again to improve quality of life. So the question is, what's the, what's the medicine and, and what is 23 and a half hours? So the medicine was exercise, mostly walking, so not triathlons. And, and let me just put it a different way. I, I think what I'm um, asking you to do is if you think about your typical day, so there's 24 hours, and so you might spend most of your day, you know, this varies obviously, but, uh, you know, couch surfing, sitting at work, obviously sleeping, 
And what um, the evidence that I'm going to show you kind of tells me is the best thing you can do for your health is to spend half an hour being active, maybe an hour, and that uh, if you can do that, you can realize all the benefits I've described in the previous slides. So let's just take a quick walk through some of the literature. So Stephen Blair, uh, he's a professor at the Arnold School of Public Health at the University of South Carolina, and he looked at this in what's called the aerobic center longitudinal study, which followed over 50,000 men and women over time. And uh, along the less left side of this graph is something called attributable fractions, which is a kind of fancy word, but it's the estimate of the number of deaths in a population that would have been avoided if that specific risk factor had been erased. So for example, turning a smoker into a non-smoker or a couch potato into a daily walker. And along the bottom is the typical risk factors. You can see the uh, hypertension is incredibly important and so on and so forth. But the one that was most, that kind of applied the most risk was this sort of mysterious CRF, which is cardiorespiratory fitness, which is really low fitness. So low fitness was the strongest predictor of death. And, and this is important that most of the trials we see, to be honest, are funded by uh, pharma or, or um, other companies because they've got a drug for hypertension or high cholesterol or diabetes. And we rarely see fitness thrown into the mix and so it's nice to see a, a trial that's not so siloed. I, I, Blair's work is interesting. He also did another uh, trial looking at um, uh, obesity. What he found was you know sort of two things. One is obesity and no exercise that's a very bad combination and that's where we saw many of the negative consequences of obesity from a health point of view. But if the if the obese person was active, even if they didn't have the weight loss, but were just active and obese, that was much, much better and that the, that the exercise ameliorated much of the negative consequences of uh, obesity. Um, so if exercise is a medicine, what's a dose? So when I think of, of, of dose, I think of how long, how often, and how intense. I'm going to give you a slightly mixed message but essentially uh, more activity is better. But I must say the rate of return seems to decline after 20 or 30 minutes a day. So if you're being active less than 150 minutes a week or, or more if you're a kid, an hour a day if you're a kid, my flag goes up in the clinic. So my personal take on this is that um, you know, the literature draws a very broad brush. Uh, and so we see big differences when somebody goes from not doing anything to doing something. And after that, the return is more granular. So if we took the nurse's health study, women who went from zero activity to just one hour a week uh, reduced their heart disease rates by um, almost half. So you can break it down. So it can be 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. If you want to do uh, 30 minutes of exercise, so it can be broken into three higher intensity, it looks like it's it's equivalent to less time with lower intensity. Uh, but I think uh, the, obviously the clinical pearl is mostly thinking about your, your style and habits and your personal cues. So if you're only gonna do it if it's pre-booked with friends, you know, I have couples that take a half hour walk every morning or evening to organize their life. A dog is a great uh, walking coach. Uh, the data showing 67% of dog walkers achieve the 150 minutes a week just with the dog walking. And finally, of course, your commute, you know, getting off stop early, taking the stairs and so on and so forth. So thinking about that, I'm just going to walk you through some quick uh, slices of the literature. Uh, the first one comes from Japan. In, in, the, in the 90s, uh, Japan required all employers to conduct annual health screens for uh, their employees. And so a large gas company in Japan called Osaka uh, used this to answer a great question. Um, so if people walk to work was longer, did that reduce their chance of serious health problems? So in this example, high blood pressure. And what they found is under 10 minute walk, no difference. 11 to 20 minute walk, 12% reduction in rates of high blood pressure or hypertension. And over 21 minute walk, a 29% decrease in rates of high blood pressure. So uh, the authors calculated that for every increase of 10 minutes in your walk to work, there was a 12% reduction in the likelihood of getting high blood pressure. The second exhibit is uh, looking at stents. So this is something we commonly do down medicine. So you can see on the left here, the arteries blocked. On the right, a vascular surgeon has gone in and uh, put in a balloon, opened it up, and left a stent to keep it open, which makes great sense. So a German researcher named Reiner Hambrecht uh, looked at this with about 100 cardiac patients. He got half the group to exercise, and by that I mean 20 minutes a day on an exercise bicycle, and then once weekly, 60-minute aerobics class. And the other half got the high-tech stent and just their sort of normal activity. And after one year, 88% of the exercises were event-free compared to 70% of the people that got a stent. Um, so both worked, uh, but I find it 
you know, sort of incredible that the, uh, the low tech uh, made a bigger difference. And you have to remember that the stent just fixes one part of the heart. The next way to think about it is the reverse. So what I call sitting disease, we know that being sedentary is bad for your health, but uh, a researcher named Leonard Veerman uh, wanted to quantify this, and he did so down in Australia in a big study they did there. They found compared with persons who watch no TV, those who spend a lifetime average of six hours a day watching TV can expect to live about five years left. I mean, that's incredible. But then I think, oh, who watches six hours a day of TV? Uh, and it turns out the average adult in the USA spends about five hours a day uh, watching TV or screens. So I, th I, th I find this fascinating that um, we never think of the TV as uh, something that's bad for our health, but clearly it's as powerful as many other risk factors for chronic disease. So I'm just going to leave you with, uh, well, I guess, two quotes. So one is Terry Garcia, the, the, the singer who is the lead singer for the Grateful Dead. And he said, somebody has to do something. It's just incredibly pathetic that it has to be us. And I, I think that's true, that it, in some ways it has to be us. As Hippocrates said, uh, walking is man's best medicine. And so I'm going to finish by asking you a question. And this may have some personal challenges for you. So, you know, you might be very busy with work or kids or both, and you, or you may be uh, in pain or have other priorities. But um, um, my question to you is, can you limit your sitting and sleeping to just 23 and a half hours a day? So something to think about. Thank you very much. That's really good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Has it, has anyone seen? Have you seen that before? I've not seen it before. No, it, it's good though. <laughs> so a couple of reasons why I wanted to share that, um, which I kind of forgot, but um, that popped up again. That one of the number one risk factors for um, for death that we see a high risk factor that you can change is cardiorespiratory fitness. Um, and cardiorespiratory fitness has been um, talked about a lot um, with regards to COVID-19 um, and the virus right now that's going, going around. And so I think it's just interesting right now, hopefully those of us that are healthy, this is a not a time to live in fear, but a time to just really take um, inventory of what we're doing um, for our health and what we're doing for our wellness. And just to see, it doesn't need to be something extreme. Um, the lowering the hypertension 30 minutes a day on a bike. Um, those things can be really achievable for us. Um, so this is where your, um, your pen and your pencil come in handy. I'd love for you guys to take a couple notes for yourself. Um, and this is something that I would do with my personal training clients. The first thing I do is just a little consult and we get to know each other. And so I'm going to treat you guys that way. Um, so we just want to look at ourselves. What is our personality? Um, what do we enjoy about fitness? And this might be looking back to what were my routines pre being um, home more? What, what did I really enjoy? Um, so for me, it's, it's being outside. That's going to be part of it. Um, so with the stay at home, I can still find ways to be outside. I also really enjoy exercising with friends. That has needed to change a bit. Um, so you're knowing your personality. Um, and then right now, I just want you to write down what your primary challenges are. Um, lack of gym, lack of equipment, um, lack of structure. Um, I think those are the few that I've heard, but just thinking for yourself, um, I really don't like the quote, there are no excuses. I actually think that um, excuses are often challenges and we can really beat ourselves up by saying there shouldn't be any excuse. I should be able to make this happen. There are some real challenges um, to not having equipment and you've been using gym equipment. So you're noting your, noting your challenges. Um, and then we want to talk about um, what can I change and how can I fit in these 30 minutes a day of walking, obviously I would encourage outdoor walking or biking, something where you're moving your body, where might it fit? Um, the other thing to ask yourself is how do my expectations need to change during this time? Um, and that's an interesting question because um, it's gonna affect, it, uh, what affects it is our why, why do we exercise? And so um, our reasons for why can change a lot through our lifespan, but hopefully what we got through that, um, that creative video also was just that 
maintaining activity will increase our lifespan by five years. So lowering your amount sitting and watching TV, you can extend your life by five years. And when I keep that in mind, so um, a long, healthy life, even if I can't, it can't be my um, refreshment, my break from the kids, I'm still going to make it happen because I know the real reason or another reason. So you're going to ask yourself, why am I doing this during this time um, and having a why? And that's, a, that's kind of a trendy thing trainers ask anyways. What is your why? Um, the other thing that we want to talk about is um, what you want to do this week. So making it really practical. What are your small achievable goals? Um, I know I've seen some posts going around Facebook and it's like a, it's a pretend post, but um, I've lost 10 pounds. I'm eating all vegan and um, all these things I've changed while I'm at home. And the reality is, is that most of us are in completely new rhythms and routines. Um, and you see, um, hopefully all of us know kids. <laughs> if we know any children, when you change their routine, even a baby, they have a meltdown. <laughs> and so as adults, our routine has been um, drastically changed. And so setting very small achievable goals. And if you can think of tomorrow, what would be one thing that I could do to start putting me on the path to where I want to be with my fitness um, and my wellness. I like to include both. I think fitness and wellness, um, they're, they're intermingled. Um, the one thing that I have my personal training clients start with the first week I'm working with them is to just increase their water intake along with getting in their exercise. And so you can make that little note for yourself. I'm just going to tomorrow increase my intake of water and I'm going to do my 30 minute, my 30 minute walk or my 30 minute bike. Um, psychologically, this is just kind of a fun, fun thing. We do better when we add things into our life instead of take away. And I think that is one of the real challenges right now. We've had what we've had, what we feel like a lot of things um, almost taken away things that we were used to doing before. And so if you can think about what am I going to give myself as far as a kindness, a walk outside as a kindness to yourself, um, even maybe walking with a, while you visit with a friend. I know I've done that um, and talking. Uh, that can be a real kindness to you that you're adding into your lifestyle. Same thing with nutrition. I don't think this is a great time to um, do anything super rigid or drastic, but what would be a kindness to your body right now that you could add in? Water would be one. Increasing your intake of vegetables to really build up your immune system would be another thing. Um, okay, I could ramble on. I told Nicole that, but I think the best thing would probably be, I have some other notes and things I want to ask, have you guys ask yourself, but I do want to hear from you guys what your current challenges are so that I can speak to those a little bit more um, specifically. So why don't we um, open it up for questions um, and I can help you guys be creative. That is sort of, uh, that's what I do. That's what I do with people. How can we, how can I help you meet your goals with what you have? Time, equipment, limitations, um, and maybe you just need someone to tell you to get going. So let's open it up. That's really good. Thank you, Anna. Got some yeah. great tips. I already feel more motivated. Um, so if anybody wants to unmute themselves and ask a question, you are certainly welcome to do that. Um, or, uh, like I said in the chat box, you can send me, um, a message or you can just, um, type it in there if you don't want to be heard. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, and I'll just take this kind of moment too to mention um, Nicole had reached out because um, something I'm doing that's new, kind of my new challenge is an online fitness program. Um, I've dabbled a little bit, but there's now the need. And I typically teach fitness classes at Western Wisconsin Health in Baldwin and a program that has been really fun for people is called Lift Strong. And it's a progressive strength training program and cardio. You get your assignment for the week. Um, that in-person class, we have not been able to meet. And so we've gone to online. And today um, I'm starting a new six week program and it's just $30 for six weeks. You're in a Facebook group that 
provides you. So if you were one of the people that wrote down, I really, my personality re really needs someone else doing it with me. Um, that would be a place for you. I post a workout of the week. You need to do it again two more times before we meet again. You also have two cardio assignments. You can, you can do as much or, of little, or as little of it as you want. And then you have a nutrition challenge each week. And I'm hoping that after these six weeks, we'll be back to the gym. And so something to sort of carry us, carry us to that. Or maybe you'll find you really love working out at home. So if you guys have questions on that too, I'd love to answer them. Um, and I can leave a note on Nicole's page too, um, just with my email, if that's something that you would wanna jump into if you're looking for more structure. Um, I know I love the structure. I love having a plan and knowing what I should be doing. So it's just as much for me as for my class. Yeah, um, so the best way to get involved with that is to email you then? Yes, just email me um, at becomingalivept at gmail.com and then I'll just send you the registration form. It allows us to go back and forth a little bit if there are more personal or individualized needs too. Yeah, that's super reasonable too. <laughs> I know, right? Yes, it's fun. I'm new at it. So I, you know, I wanted it to be a low investment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you might be new at the like online training type stuff, but you have a lot of experience and people will definitely um, benefit from that. Um, okay. Does anybody have a question? I'll just be quiet for a second. <laughs> I would love to hear from everyone what they're doing for fitness at home right now, or if it's changed. So if you feel brave enough to type it in or share. Yeah. I know it's kind of weird sharing, especially when it's recorded, <laughs> but. What have you been doing, Nicole? Yeah, you have to put me on the spot because I can't get out. <laughs> oh, wait, I see. Is that Julie? She's brave. She's out walking right now. Okay, you have to unmute yourself. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. It was okay. hard to figure out the video and the muting. Sorry. Yeah, we're actually out for a walk right now. We usually go out after dinner. If it's nice, we go for a walk. But actually, I have a question. Um, my sister is 17 weeks pregnant and she lives in an apartment and she doesn't get out at all. Um, maybe some good healthy tips for her to stay active. Yeah, yeah. Well, she can, I mean, up until, you know, about the third trimester in pregnancy, you really can um, do a lot as far as fitness goes. Was she, was she working out already or is she a new exerciser? No, I mean, she's a pretty active person. I wouldn't say she exercises on a regular basis or anything, but um, her going to work has just stopped. Every, all of her active things have just completely gone away. And um, they don't really live in a place where they can go out walking very easily either. So right. she feels stuck in her house, yeah. in her apartment yeah. for a long time. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah, well, there are a lot of great um, free options out there too. I mean, she would be welcome to jump into my program, prenatal and postpartum certified, um, and she could do the workout right with us. Um, the other option for free workouts uh, that I love is a website called fitnessblender.com. And they have everything, yoga, Pilates, um, low impact, um, high impact. So she could choose a low impact cardio workout. Um, and we love using those um, just periodically for variety, but I, I would recommend that for her. That's a great idea. Yeah. Good I'm going to mute you. myself again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's yeah, windy or just... not. Like, if you guys hear the wind, but I can hear you well, actually, remarkably well for being on a family okay. walk. You won't be yeah. able to hear me. <laughs> it's it's the AirPod. That's how I um, do a lot of things at home with kids. And stick in my AirPods. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> I need to get those. I feel like technology is going so fast. I'm like, yeah, really, especially now. <laughs> yes, yes. Everyone so has them. 
I was kind of like, now's a good time to do some Zoom calls since everyone's going to be doing, hopefully know how to do them already. <laughs> yes. Yes, for sure. Zoom piano lessons and we do Zoom physical therapy. Um, that is my other thing that I've seen really healthy for my kids that I think is healthy for adults. So continuing some of their normal routines, but they are on Zoom. So I've seen um, my, yes. seven, my seven-year-old having his piano lesson still at five o'clock, which is when he did piano lessons before. You can just tell he's energized after because that was part of his normal routine. Um, and so that's something, one of my workout classes that I always taught at 9.30 on Wednesday mornings, I still go and teach that class um, and keep that normal rhythm. And that's really helpful. So, um, you know, the video mentioned it, but normal rhythms, fitness, um, they are natural, just natural mood boosters. Um, when our rhythms are changed, um, our anxiety increases. There's a lot of emotional stress. I've actually had a lot of conversations with people along those lines, depression. Um, those are some of the things that you're combating too in fighting for fitness um, and fighting for activity. Anytime you raise your heart rate, you're releasing endorphins. Anytime you rotate your spine, that's something we talk about in Pilates. So just stretching for 10 minutes, you're going to release some endorphins and have a different perspective on the day. And I can tell, um, I do a little something, do a bike ride with the kids and my ability to be more patient and have a more positive outlook is there. Um, so that would be another one of my just really simple tips. If you were always going to the gym after work, I would encourage you to at that same time, stop what you're doing and do your workout then if it was before. Um, find an option for working that in, whether it's just going for a simple walk around your yard or around your house. Steps are like a magic tool. Um, I, when my youngest was a baby, I did the stairs a lot in our house just while I listened to podcasts after he went to bed. My joke was with my husband flying for days on end, I couldn't take a sleeping baby to the gym in the evening and that was my time to work out. And so I actually trained for um, a hike across the Grand Canyon on the stairs in our house, listening to podcasts and music, I would walk up and down um, for hours. And um, it, it's a really sweet memory for me now. So I'm hopeful mm -hmm. that during this time of different routines, you can find a way and it will be a really sweet memory for you of doing something really unique and different than you never, I can't imagine walking my stairs now for hours, but I had that long-term goal. Um, and and um, was willing to put in the time. And that's helpful too. Having a vision of the future, we're not gonna always be um, sort of in this stuck phase of life either. So, so yeah, well, if there aren't any other questions, do you have anything else, Nicole? Um, I don't think I have any more questions necessarily. So I think we have a lot of other stuff we can talk about. I know we could. So we could do, yes, we could yeah. do an, a whole other seminar. Um, the one thing I kind of forgot to mention was um, becoming alive. Um, that comes from the Howard Thurman quote that says, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go and do that. Um, and then also a Bible verse that's near and dear to me, Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. Um, and just the reminder that we're all in process we're all becoming something and someone, and you have the chance to, um, yeah, make some choices tomorrow about who you, you want to become and who you want, what you want your health to become. Um, so I just encourage you to step forward into something really small and be successful. It doesn't need to be big. Do one small, tiny change um, and enjoy the success that you find in that. That's awesome. I feel more encouraged. <laughs> Definitely kind of in a slump with the whole like exercise thing. So I took some notes. I did my homework. When, you know, Yay. Why I have my something to do this week. So <laughs> good. Uh, yeah. So, um, well, thanks everybody for coming. That was super fun. Yes. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. That was, yeah, it was really encouraging. I feel inspired. <laughs> hey, well, and you're already doing it. You're out walking. That's awesome. And definitely put, yeah. your sister, put your sister in touch with me if she needs more specifics or, 
has yeah, questions for sure. about, about what she can or cannot do to, I'm happy to help. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm certainly glad that it's getting nice out so we can actually go outside and do some stuff. If this was all happening in like December, oof, <laughs> things would have been different. I mean, it's going outside in the, um, in the winter is fun too, but. <laughs> you know me, I'm outside every day. I, oh yeah. <laughs> I, I'm thankful my parents kicked me outside every day because I love being outside. So yeah, it is oh, fun. And someone's connecting to audio. Do you have a question? Ruth. Oh no. Okay. I thought maybe <laughs> Ruth had a question. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me, Nicole. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. See you later. Bye everyone. Thank you.